Student bodies across the country are writing letters in support of the students at University of Missouri. As of this afternoon, Elon student government has not proposed any legislation to draft a letter. Elon SGA is set to hold their final meeting of the semester this Thursday. Closer to home, friends and family members are still mourning the loss of Elon Jr. Dimitri Allison. The 21-year-old died last Wednesday after falling from a residence hall at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Police ruled his death a suicide. Allison was a wide receiver for the Phoenix football team and played in all nine games of the season before his death. A memorial service for Allison is scheduled for this Thursday at his high school, South Lake Christian Academy in Huntersville, North Carolina at 5 p.m. The Truett Center has offered to provide transportation for those who want to attend. Since last week, hundreds of students, faculty, and staff have come together to reflect and grieve. Our Mayor Sutch joins us with how our university is not alone when it comes to dealing with suicide on college campuses. Jackie, according to Emory University, suicide is the second leading cause of death for people ages 25 to 34 and the third leading cause of death for ages 15 to 24. With 10% of college students having a plan for suicide, leading to more than 1,000 suicides on college campuses each year, the sudden shock of losing a friend and loved one is something colleges are no stranger to. Here at Elon, resources are made available to students. In an email sent last night by Dean of Student Health and Wellness, Janelyn Patterson, reminds students the school does offer confidential counseling services at no cost. Sessions can be made by appointment only, Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 5, and on Friday, 8.30 to 4. You can schedule a session by calling 336-278-7280. Dean Patterson advises any member of the community who is worried about a student's well-being to report them using the online Student Concerns Report, which allows a faculty member to directly follow up with the student. ELN spoke with Dr. Andrew Lamb, Vice President of Medical Affairs for Alamance Regional Medical Center, to learn how people can best support those affected by suicide. They don't have to necessarily say anything. They just need to be there. So a lot of times people avoid someone who's going through a tra traumatic event like the loss of a loved one because they don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. You can just sit with them and hold the hand. In the past five days since Allison's death, death, those closest to him have spoken out, remembering their friend, son, and teammate. Freshman and ELN contributor Emmanuel Morgan played high school football with Allison at South Lake Christian Academy outside of Charlotte. Morgan says Allison convinced him but especially to come if you're to feeling ELN, like and to him his death was completely unexpected, but now sees his death as a teaching moment for the greater community. Especially if you're feeling like down, if you're feeling like sad about something, yeah. suicide is not suicide is not the best option. I, you can talk to someone because if I knew if he was going through that, he could have just talked to me. So I feel like if anyone else like needs like help, like I'm here, your best friend's here, anyone's here to help you. We're joined now by Dean of Student Health and Wellness, Janelyn Patterson. Thank you so much for being here, Dean Patterson. You're welcome, Meredith. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, my first question is, suicide seems to be an issue that people either do know or don't know about mm -hmm. on college campuses. Why is that, and what can students do to maybe get those tough conversations started? Well, I think that certainly as, a, as an entire society, we've got to, exp to come to grips that folks are struggling more perhaps than they have in the past. And while there are resources available, unfortunately, I think there's still a stigma associated with expressing sadness and depression and despair and sometimes suicidality. Certainly, if someone expresses sadness or depression or ex despair, that does not in itself mean someone's suicidal. And so we certainly, that is a great way for us to gain um, entry into helping students, either getting them to counseling services. Some students want to go off campus and had rather participate in, in activities off campus, and we kind of keep those resources on our uh, website as well. But, uh, you know, certainly to open it up so that people feel like that they can talk and that they can express sadness and despair um, and that they know that their friends are going to accept that and help get them to resources or refer them to resources. Last year we initiated an online mental health screening for those students who may not be sure what's going on with them. Uh, and it's totally confidential as well, but we've also had some really good response from that from students saying it was a good way for me to learn that maybe it would help me to, 
to participate in counseling or to benefit from talking to someone. So that's a low, uh, low exposure, low risk way for students to get information. Uh, so I think the first piece is really encouraging folks and reducing the stigma around help seeking because I think Elon is such a happy place and, and our students are highly motivated and intelligent and ambitious and all of those things. And when people feel like that they can't meet up to those standards, sometimes they mm. begin to feel that depression and despair. Mm. Certainly, it, though, if someone thinks that or expresses um, intent to harm themselves or someone else, um, you want to get help immediately. You want to contact, uh, we recommend that you call 911. People think um, immediately that someone's going to come and um, they're going to, folks are going to get in trouble or folks are going to, um, they're going to um, have uh, judicial repercussions and that's just not the case. Campus safety or the town police are there first to help. Um, they'll generally do a, a baseline assessment with someone there. If the student can ref, um, benefit from more assessment, then we get them to the hospital because we know that they're safe. Mm -hmm. um, and 90% of those students come right back within the next few days. So um, we certainly, though, if someone says they're going to hurt themselves, don't be fearful about calling 911. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for joining us today. We appreciate you're, you're it. Welcome. And over the weekend, I'll learn from those tips. Uh, Jackie, back to you.